You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. This week I became only the 11th human in recorded history to both open a tin of corned beef successfully and avoid numerous deep lacerations to the hands. So I decided to celebrate by making panacle tea, surely the king of modern peasant food. And this northeast English dish is so quick and easy, I even allowed myself the indulgence of a little game of potato balls with the 600 grams of peeled potatoes required for this recipe. Brought to mind David Bryant, do you remember him? They just don't make sportsmen like that any more. Anyway, once we'd reconvened for a post-game huddle, I put the potatoes on to boil in salted water, and while they're cooking away, I can get on with everything else. I'm making enough panacle here for two very hungry people, so two smallish, medium-ish onions is about right. And I'll half them through the core, lay them down on the flat side, and with the core facing out, slice thinly so the onion breaks conveniently into lots of thin, semicircular onion strips like this, and their relative availability to the disenfranchised in medieval times makes root vegetables the basis of almost all peasant food, so as well as the onion, I'm including a medium grated carrot. Now I need around 500 millilitres of stock on standby, and I'm not looking to win any Michelin stars, so I'm using good old Bisto gravy granules, although any ready meat or veg stock will do. Stock granules or powder bring a huge amount of convenience to the kitchen, but using them I can't help but feel like I'm betraying the memory of my serf ancestors who toiled in the fields at the behest of whichever chinless lord was in command of the fiefdom at the time. I'm ready now to begin cooking off my onions and carrots in a big knob of lard, because I think using any other oil here is just not cricket. And I'm going to cook them for a few minutes until they soften. Panacle tea is based on, or at least very similar to, corned beef hash, which in turn has a lot in common with other low-grade meat stews that can be found in almost all cultures. Scouse, Irish stew, ragu, borscht. Anywhere really where there was an uneven and unfair distribution of resources, which is everywhere from the dawn of time until the sun burns out in five billion years. And while you contemplate the destruction of humanity, don't forget to add a pinch of salt to your veggies, because we must continue moving forward, despite being saddled with the knowledge that we'll all perish one day. But they say you'll live longer if you eat lots of garlic, so I'll include one large clove here. I'll crush it like a worker's rebellion first, because that makes the skin easier to remove, and then I'll chop it finely, because... I haven't been able to find my garlic press since I moved into my new bedsit. The garlic should be cooked with the onion and carrot for a minute or two to remove the harsh raw flavour. Not your typical ingredient for a panacle I suppose, but it's a brave new world. Get on board or get out of the way. Here comes the corned beef. In its signature trapezium-shaped can and key-based opening mechanism, Probably once served a useful purpose that is now redundant, but remains this way for fear of infuriating the corned beef eating public. I sliced my hand wide open many times in my youth while opening tins of corned beef. A rite of passage, I think, on the way to becoming a real man. Kind of like a bar mitzvah for secular white working class British people. I'm going to leave the fat on. You can scrape it off if you like, but why deprive yourself of all the non-specific fatty goodness of unknown origin is what I always say, and once sliced up a bit, we can get it in the pan where it will need to be broken up, but as the heat gets to work on the corned beef, it will break down naturally, and I believe the observations of the speed at which tinned corned beef breaks down relative to the heat applied helped James Prescott Jewell develop and establish the first law of thermodynamics. At least I think I remember reading that in a textbook that had been vandalised with graffiti tits and cocks. A pinch of salt and white pepper now, and at this point you can decide how to further season your panacle I go in with a tablespoon of Worcester sauce and a good squeeze of brown sauce. Some people use ketchup to add a little sweetness, which you definitely need, and which I add with a potentially controversial ingredient. Half a tin of baked beans, sauce and all, this gives the right amount of sweetness while also providing a little extra protein and flatulence. Two very important components of any nutritious food, I think. You can add the rest of the tin of beans in if you like, but do wash those beans, otherwise your panacle will be too sweet. And next I'll add in some of my modern 21st century stock. It's up to you how loose you'd like your panacle tea. And I do this before adding in my cooked potatoes, just so they go into a looser mix and don't get broken up too much when stirring, although... 
You want a little of that potato to break up and thicken that meat or veg stock we magically made from our state-of-the-art powder earlier. Such cutting-edge ingredients weren't available to our peasant ancestors, of course, and I often wonder what those ancient wretches would think of modern life. They'd probably draw lots of parallels between medieval feudalism and modern society. Being as it is that we live with chronic inequality, living out our squalid little lives in servitude to banks and big business, it's two sides of the same coin, really, but at least we get to watch Netflix and have an iPhone while they steal all our loot. Just going to take a taste test before adjusting my seasoning. I needed a little more salt there, and you can also add more stock if you feel you need to, but for me, I've reached the perfect hydration for my panacle and this will certainly fill your belly. The only thing the surf owned was his belly, so the saying goes, and we're probably heading that way too. You can't eat money though, so you'll have the upper hand with this recipe when the revolution comes. You have to eat it with bread of course, the cheapest sliced white loaf you can buy. Or indulge yourself with my paratha flatbreads, link in the description for those, and I hope one day we'll all be eating a big bowl of this panacle while watching live streams of a proletariat uprising on our 60-inch flat-screen TVs. I'll see you next time, eh? Terra.